What's up guys? Uh, Jeremy here with Hunting SOBs again and I threw out on the Saddle Hunter pages, uh, Saddle Hunter and Saddle Hunter Nation, uh, basically the slice here of the Samson Predator rope. Um, if anybody's ever told you this is easy, there's one guy on there, he said he had no trouble with it, but a lot of people do have trouble with it. But um, I've got some tips and tricks today are actually going to go through the splice. I couldn't find any videos online of actually splicing this rope. I found some videos of splicing class 1 uh, Samson rope, but not this actual Predator rope. The sheath, the, the um, core is um, really loose and the cover is very, very tight. So I've got some tricks on actually how to get this back through and if you see right here where this V starts to right here is where the actual core is supposed to pass through on itself. This right here going this distance is the absolute hardest part of this to me. But I've just decided I'm going to do it my way and uh, once you see this you're going to realize that this is not going anywhere. I mean there's a lot of things on earth like the earth will end before that comes out of there. Um, so, do this, I guess, disclaimer at your own risk, but I'm going to show you some tips on actually how to get this part right here, the uh, core through from the V to here. So, on this rope, if you can see, I finally got it through, but whenever I actually got it to milk back through, the core is actually here. And, um, I'm almost 100% sure that that's not going to go anywhere, but I actually want that down just a little bit more. So I'm actually going to re-splice this rope. And this is the first attempt. This is the second attempt that went a lot quicker. So once we get this done, we'll get a video up. Uh, hope it helps you. So uh, just stay tuned. Okay, so we're back here. This is the splice I just showed you that I, tr I mean, I trust that it's fine, but I'm going to do it all over again. Um, got my nephew over here helping us out today. So I'm going to start back on this end. Um, these are what I bought at Walmart if you see on the uh, saddle forms and other things for splicing rope. The only thing that I can tell you that for Samson Predator rope that this will be good for is actually getting your uh, full fit and your uh, three-quarter fit or whatever measurement that you're going to need for this splice but honestly I went and got some I think it's 15 gauge it's just some aluminum or steel I don't even really know what it is um, cable here and I cut off of a piece of a broom handle I drilled a hole in the center uh, bent it over in half pushed it through that hole loop one side around this end, the other side around uh, this end, and then just kind of took some uh, pliers and put it on there. The purpose of this is whenever we go to pull that core, what I told you was so hard, you can actually sit this on the floor and put your feet on both sides and use this to pull the rope through. So we'll show you that here in just a minute. Okay, so the first step, um, I'm not using a fid because I'm not gonna go through the uh, trouble of making one right now I broke my first one on my first attempt so I'm just using uh, to get my links just a regular tape measure so the first step and this is to go to mark R nine and a half inches is a full fit length for 716 uh, Samson Predator rope so that's you can get that off the chart on Samson Predator so when I go to that I'm just gonna make a mark with a red marker it's kind of hard to see so that I know that's gonna be my first mark so then my second mark, I'm actually going to make the length that I want my eye to be. And I can't remember what I measured this out as, but I think it's somewhere around a six, six inch loop. But I'm just going to lay this kind of across here and onto this piece to make my length. and come back to the same point so it'll be the exact same length and that's where I'm going to make my next mark again you got to saturate that real good it's kind of hard for it to show up but you're just going to see a red tint right there at that X when I go past this um, 
this second mark right here that I just made is where the core is actually going to come through the cover. And that is also from where your tag end of your core is going to loop back through and go back down into the cover here where I told you it was kind of kind of tough to do a while ago, but you're going to do a third fib length, so at nine and a half inches. I think I marked it the first time at like three and a quarter just to have enough because you're going to go past that point anyway. And I'm going to saturate and make another red marker right there, and that's going to be where we actually insert this long wire fib here in just a little bit, but I'll show you how to do that. So now that we've got those marks what you're gonna do you might not be able to see very well but these strands actually where they come down and make a V and I don't know if you can see it here but there's my initial mark with my mark R we're gonna count back eight of those V's from that red mark where they come together you'll see on that rope where they come together like this and make a V so what I'm going to do is I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Put a mark there. You got to saturate it real good. So that point, I think they call mark T, is going to be the mark where we insert the fit down here on the low end of the rope here. We'll insert here and push out and exit here and grab that tag in and come down. So to make life easier from this Mark T we just made, we're gonna count every fifth strand, the V strand. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna make a mark. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna make another mark. One, two, three, four, five. I'm make another mark. One, two, three, four, five. I'm make another mark. One, two, three, four, five, and all the way to the end. So, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to go back to that mark X that we made. And that's the mark in between the very first mark we made and the second mark to make our loop. And I've got to open these strands up here. Um, i got to open this core up very carefully. Um, whenever we go to do this because you don't want to pinch strands off and things like that. So this is the mark that we made that's going to be mark X. And this is again what I just said where you're making your loop. You're going to go to this mark X. It's going to be the second to the last mark towards the uh, tail end of the rope. And I'm just going to kind of go in here and pick these, these fibers out. This is kind of hard to do. You can take the rope and kind of scrunch it a little bit, but I just take extra special, careful time and get in there so that I don't go to the rope up in any way. I don't want to cause any more stress on the rope than needs to be caused. Well, I'm moving on, sipping on a 12 pack. Sit back, sit back, let the wind roll off of my back. So now you can see just after that little bit of work in it, I've actually got the core shining a little bit. It means we're getting close. I'm at it, man. I mean, it's just. Kind of a crucial part of your setup. And voila! One thing that I did mention that I should have done just a minute ago is that you want to go about five fifth lengths down the rope. The nine, eight. You're going about, I don't know five feet lengths down, down the rope, I guess. And you're gonna just tie an overhand knot here. And that's just to keep it from milking all the way at the end of the, end of the rope. And you'll see here in a minute, because the first thing that I'm gonna do is milk that all the way down, just about as far as I can go. I may not have marked that down far enough. But I'm gonna come back up. 
milk it all the way back down tight. It's not gonna really make it all the way back to where the original X and you'll see that will bleed through on the red, but you're gonna mark that all the way back down to where it's good and tight. I've been using a red pen on the core or on the cover just so I can see it, but I use a black pen on the uh, uh, core here. And this mark where it exits, where we pulled it out, is your first mark. And you're gonna mark a black circle all the way around this mark. Just one, one line. So then from this, I'm gonna milk this out just a little bit here. And then this is the mark one. So the two is gonna be a short fib length, short fib length, which off of my sheet was three and nine sixteenths, so just a little over a, a three and a half inches. I'm gonna pull this in. I'm gonna lay this here, and then I'm gonna find that and go just over three and a half inches. At this point, I'm gonna mark a thin line, black line all the way around two times okay so now that I've got two on there you can see one here and the two mark there and then we're gonna go down again and I go by the by the closest mark to each other so go, that's the first mark there I'll go in just a little bit more to the second and then to get to mark three you're gonna go a full fid length and then another short fid length so your full fid length is nine and a half inches so I get to that nine and a half inch mark here and I'm gonna pull it back to the mark there then I'm gonna go another short fid which is just a little bit over three and a half inches I'll make my first mark at a little over three and a half inches here. I'm gonna go all the way around it. And then I'm gonna make a second. And then I'm gonna make a third, denoting my mark three. All right, so the next thing here I'm gonna do is just kind of tape the end to keep it just a little bit easier, I guess, from going through now you can use this fit uh, if you want to make a homemade fit to do this part and like again I am still kind of casing back to this because it's not something I've done a lot um, but you're gonna go in at um, mark three because I'm reverse doing a reverse fit basically so this is the easiest part because like I told you earlier the uh, core is extremely loose so I'm gonna go in just past the third mark and just gently work this fit this is a reverse kind of what we're what we're doing here but I'm gonna go just short of the mark at mark two so once I get to that point my fit is through you just want to make sure that you don't like snag any fibers or anything like that so open the fit just a little bit I put just a piece a little piece of tape on it's not crucial on this step but it will be later but just to keep it from pulling out on me then I'm gonna work that piece right back through here get a little snag on the tape but that's about as easy there as it gets okay so now that we've got the uh, cover passed through the core on our initial pass well we're gonna go back to the steps where we counted and made our marks all the way to the end each five we're gonna go up and pull these strands these V strands
So now we're to the, we've got that all cut out. So what I'm gonna do, you can kind of see where there's still some fibers that are there together. And I'm just gonna come down here and just cut just a little piece of this off. My scissors are golden. And I'm gonna take a piece of tape tear it off here on the end just to keep it from unraveling anymore so then what you're gonna do is you're i'm gonna come up here and i'm gonna cut these off just as close to the cover as i can Mama. 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 should be two strands each Bye. you can see there we've got a really tapered cover it gets very small there so we've got our Mark T, Mark R, and then you're going to kind of slide this core down over that. You're going to slide it down enough that you're going to have to take something, and I think, I don't even remember what I put through there the last time, but I just pushed this kind of through the tape. I just don't want that to bypass. It just keeps that from us losing that tail in there because we're going to have to tighten that back here again here in a minute. So that leaves us where you kind of want to milk it down and we've got to get to that second mark here that's exposed. So now, now comes the fun part. You know, I want to make sure that you can see all this well. This is the point, the one point past the exit here, where I'm actually gonna go one to two strands past that mark, kind of towards the tail end of the rope, not up here where we're actually making our loop, so that we've got plenty of space here. I'm gonna push that through, make sure that you don't pinch off any fibers here. That feels very good. And you've got to just kind of milk that while not catching any fibers there in the center. Manipulate that rope, manipulate the fit as needed. And we're past it. So I'm going to slide this all the way up. And then we're going to exit at that mark T. So we've got our exit point. This, uh, in the beginning I told you we had some tips and tricks. This is the, the part right here that caused me absolute nightmares. Blisters on my hands and it was extremely, extremely difficult. So, what I'm yeah. going to tell you. What I'm going to tell you here is I'm going to take these and kind of tether this down here at the end. Just like I did my other rope, I'm just pulling one strand at a time, about every fourth or fifth strand. There's something I need to zoom in here during. I'm just pulling these strands out. Just like I was early. I'm really just trying to take this into a taper. That way I can get the you're gonna be cutting a lot of this off anyway. But I want the end of this rope to be as tight and as small as I can get it. Because once you tie it into this uh, wire fed that I've got here. It can make your life a nightmare. And we'll pull one more. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. Just go off and cut it as close as I can. Oh, 
Then I'm gonna go down here. Maybe we'll cut this one here off. I'm just trying to get that in just as good as I can get it. And I'm gonna go down here on the end and I'm gonna taper these like as much as possible. Just kind of fan these and taper them. Just trying to make this tail piece right here just as easy as I can to fit inside of that fit. So the next thing you do is I'm just going to stretch this fit just a little bit here. Now, what I decided, another thing that I do is I'm going to tape this just a little bit further down here. You want to keep your tape to a minimum. So I'll tear like a half a strip and keep your tape to a minimum because the bulkier it is, the harder it is to get through that core. And what this does is just keep that rope from pulling off the fit. Now hopefully we can make this through on one pass, but we shall see. I'm not even going to go much further with that. Then I'm going to take this. It'll slide up just a piece, but you just want to make sure you pinch that fit together as, as good as you can. So now it's time to actually get this piece to feed through where we got the rope coming out of that mark. Hopefully this will go on through. All right, so now we've got the rope passed back through the core and it's sliding, but it's gonna get very, very difficult once it gets to where there's already core inside of that rope. And I've done my job because it's happening. So that's the whole point of your homemade piece, is so you can stand on it. Yeah. And we're through. So now, what I'm gonna do is just kind of take them, take my scissors. I'm gonna cut that completely off. It's a mangled up mess. But I'm gonna take the stew out of the end of this with this tape to keep it from getting any further. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna kinda tighten those fibers up just a little bit. And I'll pull this off here to a point. We can go ahead and remove this. That We're gonna also taper like we did the tag end of that. This is just gonna also bury right down in there. All right, so now we've got this part stretched out the point where it intercedes here. I'm just gonna pull the tape here off of the tail end. This is where the, the cover goes through the core. And I'm gonna milk this down. I got a few little snags on it that's really not too bad. And I'm just gonna milk this part down basically as tight as I can get it. Because once you get it to that point you want it to be able to bury as easy as you can in this core here. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to where we there are tie up spot down here and we're just gonna milk this back like as far as you can and that's gonna slide in on itself. You'll kind of start seeing that disappear just a little bit. It will get very difficult once you start and I'm to that point now, but it will get kind of difficult once you get over that piece. I'm gonna work my way back down. I'm 
apparently it's just a P2. I guess at this point it's basically just a, you're just working that and you can see that it's almost disappeared here. So close. You said on the camera? Yep. So close to burying. Okay, so this is our finished product. We've got it buried to our mark here maybe just a little bit shy of it um, it's not easy to do but with a little bit of uh, a little bit of prep work if I would have uh, cleaned this end up there a little bit more before I decided where I was gonna make it as my berry it would have went a little bit simpler finally I want to tell you I already have a loop on the end of this one the one I told you I wasn't going to use I'll be cutting this off the length whenever you go to to start milking your milking your cord uh, go ahead and zoom in on John make this make a loop at the end of this cord as far as you can it's just going to give you extra I don't know what the technical term is but inertia instead of going at the loop where a lot of people says because you're gonna you're gonna really have to get in there milk it as far back as you can and get it over as good as you can and then where this comes in was I was actually going up here and just kind of tap it to loosen the strands and let the fibers down. But at the end, when it comes to it, just get a good whip on it. And you're just gonna have to whip, 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 and that got it to bury. Nothing that you want it to be abrasive on the loop, but John, do you have confidence that this loop is going to hold you and not break? Absolutely. Do you think it's gonna slip? No. So many things on earth that I think might happen before this this thing slips out of here. Um, the urge could come to an end. Um, my wife could be in the mood. Um, might enjoy going to work on Monday. There's probably some other things that's going to happen before I feel like this thing's going to slip. But, um, I mean, it's not easy to do. But it can be done. And when it comes to me being up on the end of this tether, I know that I did this. If it fails, it's on me. Nobody else, no factory, no buddies, nobody off of Facebook or whatever, saddle hunting club. So if you like this video, like and subscribe. You can tell by the sweat on my face and everywhere else that this is not an easy task, but it can be done. And I just wanted to show you a few little tips that would make it easier. The first tip being tapering that uh, core end whenever you go to pass it through this elongated end, it slides through very easily. And my second tip is tapping this with a rubber mallet. I forgot the rubber mallet, so I just used this bar today, but also finding you a bar to go through. Getting to the end of that tip, end of the rope was another tip that I was trying to give you, and then just really popping it. I mean, just get in there on it. I mean, John, you did it at the end, and you just gotta get in on it, don't you? Mm -hmm. All right, guys. This is a hunting SOBs, uh, bringing you more content later on in the year. Going to put some deer down. Going to get into uh, showing you the processes of taxidermy and how to skin, um, throw up how to fletch uh, arrows, the target shoot, what we do scout. And uh, the main thing is, is if you like us, leave it, drop us a comment, but don't forget to like and subscribe. We are also uh, hunting SOBs on Facebook, we're on Instagram, and also on Twitter. So uh, give us a like. 
give us a follow or give us a subscribe. And we appreciate it. Waves crashing on the shore. I woke up on that white sand beach. Rita said, boy, you've been dreaming. Talking in your sleep. About waking up in Pittsburgh. Jack stop in Lynchburg. Well, it sound like fun, a road trip run. I ain't ever, never seen three rivers. They ain't got the southern draw, but they can rock it up there in Mr. Small's, yeah. We could hang out at home.